I know the reason you clicked on this video. It's the same reason I click on these kind of videos. I'm just hoping that someone has knowledge of some great game that checks all of my boxes that somehow I missed. As MMO fans, we've been in a bit of a new game drought these last years, and we've seen videos with the same games that probably still won't be released for years populate these games to check out this year style lists, surrounded by other games that just aren't even worth your time. 2019 is bad, but for me, there actually are a few bright spots. We'll start with one of them, Temtem. Broadly speaking, this is an MMO based around monster or creature collection, taming, breeding, and battling. And there's no hiding it, they've obviously played and taken huge inspiration from Monster Rancher on the PlayStation 1. One of the most appealing aspects of Temtem to me, besides saying its name, is in order to make the turn-based battles and combat as skill-reliant as possible, their vision is to remove as much RNG as they can, which many games use as a balancing crutch, heavily relying on things like damage ranges, evasion, accuracy, critical hits, in order to create variation in actions. They're introducing systems alongside their skills to differentiate themselves in other ways, but they really want to lean into minimizing the moments when someone can call bullshit, and this may even make the combat feel a little bit more competitive, and I know that there are tons of people who like these monster battling games in a competitive light. I don't even know if there is an NDA or how much can and can't be said. Backers of the game have already spent time in it, there are YouTube Let's Plays, and there's tons of footage if you're interested. The reception though has been overwhelmingly positive, which I attribute to the fact that it can deliver on expectations while maintaining a very small scope. As long as they have cool monsters and a battle system, they're good. The campaign, co-op, housing, cosmetics, and the promise of cross-platform play is just gravy, and is probably just the start of what we can expect from this game in the future. Where do the Joy-Con boys stand when it comes to that Tem Tem? That's a Tem Tem! Tem Tem! That's a Tem Tem! My fucking voice! Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. World of Warcraft Classic. I could release an entire video on my thoughts on this. I think the way that they're releasing this title is the safe option and is squandering a huge opportunity by doing so, but it's undeniable that this will be the largest and most interesting release we've had or will have in MMOs for a while. MMOs are so much fun the first month when people are still enjoying the game, figuring it out, all of the communities and online presence the game has is like supercharged, friends haven't quit yet, and World of Warcraft Classic will be that and more. Because you're going to attract not only people looking to play a new game, but people who may have stopped playing games wanting to jump in and see what those people who haven't been able to shut up about it for a decade are talking about. You also have some of the top video game influencers who are full on board with this game. You're also going to get people who may have played the game way back then that are going to come back in a different phase of their life and play the game from a new perspective. It's also interesting because What's going to happen when you release a solved game with an uncertain but probably fixed future? As well as being a free addition to the subscription of the world's most popular MMORPG, which design-wise is so drastically different, but you're going to have these gaming tourists almost just checking out what the game is because it's free. And how could seeing this game, experiencing this game, change the way they view the live service? But most importantly, it's a rose-tinted glasses reality check. Some of the more tedious old-school mechanics are both remembered too fondly and written off as just nostalgia. I'm going to play it to be part of that initial wave, but it's not a game that I'll take seriously. All the discovery for me has already been done. It will be nice to again try to one-shot triple Wind Fury proc people, but the launch of World of Warcraft Classic is to me, as a returning player, more of an event than a game that I want to see unfold. Lost Ark Online. It launched in Korea last year, and I played it up until recently, almost daily. I stopped because not only have there been more and more rumors and indications that a North American version is on the way, and playing on the Korean servers, you have this constant fear of being discovered as a foreigner and banned as certain players over there actively report and get us banned. I'm pretty sure it was confirmed that the Russian version is meant to go into alpha this summer and beta and open beta by year end. And I might be wrong here, but I believe I saw that they won't be region locked either, as that was kind of the straw that killed our English-speaking group on the Korean server anyway. 
Lost Ark is such a good game that playing it ruined other games for me. The level of polish and care with the game, as well as how good it feels and looks to push buttons, even with the increased ping, is almost unrivaled. The performance is stellar, the variation, the amount of content, it's just a solid MMORPG. Although I will add that it is a solid MMORPG in the same vein as Final Fantasy XIV, where once you get to the end game stuff, it becomes formulaic to a fault, but presented well. It is very gamey, and while it looks like an ARPG, it couldn't be further from that and is considerably slower and much more structured. While I do play overseas games and tinker with English patches and VPNs like I did with Lost Ark, I've never specifically recommended other people to jump through similar hoops. Lost Ark is actually an exception there, and I would say that when it hits the Russian servers, if it isn't region locked, I would get my hands on the game, even just to try it, to know and see that this is a game that kind of lived up to the incredibly crazy amount of hype that was backing it. This next one might get groans. It's called Mad World, and let me just say outright that strictly on the atmosphere and the visuals of this game that I have been looking forward to this for a while now, Add in that this game is a full featured MMO, but is browser based and free to play, and that accessibility already makes it a contender and worthy of a mention, but recently they had a playtest, and now I'm impressed. Granted, it's really hard to get a feel for the content of a game during a weekend playtest, and for sure it still has rough edges and a ways to go, but I love the dark and twisted atmosphere, even with poorly translated writing, more than I thought I would. Breaking from the shackles of traditional high fantasy or sci-fi is just so refreshing. The enemies are nightmare fuel, the combat and looting and character customization actually reminded me a lot of Ragnarok Online, and I'm not just saying that to grab certain people's attention, it's a similar, very functional but simplistic form of action combat with many different weapon types and abilities and you have points to skill up the abilities and points to skill up different attributes and it seems like you're going to build your character based on where you allocate these points very similar to ragnarok although there weren't jobs or classes that i saw this is also going to seem really silly and you can almost disregard this part please don't rip me apart in the comments but my favorite part was the ragnarok style item drops when you kill an enemy you see a mini icon of the item fall to the ground i don't know how but it makes it feel different and when it's 2d and it's these sort of like icons as opposed to 3d item model drops it it's just different again you know to pretty up the language i could say with immediate visual representation of the spoils of a kill it maintains that causal link from death to loot making it more seamless that you lose when a game obscures the drop contents into a sparkling body to build anticipation for the largest possible dopamine hit and transform each kill into a small scale loot box in the process I could say that, it's probably not true, there is just something I really like about clearly seeing the item itself drop and sit on the ground waiting to be clicked. It's also a part of the charm of old Ragnarok if you grew up with it. I think there's going to be a portion of people watching this video that get it and other people that think that this is the dumbest paragraph I've ever written. Overall, it does have a lot of the charm of Tria Savior, but it's dark. And again, it's a browser game that's free to play, which is crazy. And even seeing the massive amount of new players into Albion when they released free to play, it's just, you can never discount free products that run on everything. And Mad World is a cool free product that will basically run on anything. So two last games to add here. But these are the games that I'm the least confident that they'll be playable this year. There's a good chance, but whether or not it will include the true indicator for an MMO release, the No More Wipes status, who knows. Those two games are The New World and Hightail. New World is Amazon's big sandbox MMO. There have been some leaks and people seem to talk freely about it online, but I do believe there still is an NDA in effect, so I'll respect that. New World is really cool to me because even within sandbox MMOs, New World pushes boundaries. In fact, many of the people you may see leaks from may have played the game a few hours and came back with the impression that New World is just a survival game. 
it isn't. Now, I don't want to fully dig into why or how much overlap an online survival game and a sandbox MMO share already, but in my time with New World, coming from someone who has played EVE Online for the better part of a decade, I like freeform, sandbox, community-oriented, conflict-driven games, and having Amazon's name and more importantly, their money behind it only makes it more interesting. And more important than anything that I could specifically say, at this point, I've turned down multiple offers or paid trips from them because I already see it as a game that I'll play long term as long as they build out the potential I see in it and not fumble and just create a pretty murder box or go over the top with weird Twitch integrations. The other, Hytale, is one that I actually have no interest in playing personally. The interest I do have is in the interest to the game itself. The trailer for Hytale alone has something like 47 million views, and it's a game name I see brought up over and over and over and over again. When you look over the features and the systems that this game will include, it looks like it checks many of the boxes, but also has dope stuff like giving players modeling and animation tools to customize your character and your items as well as allowing you to script things in the game. Hytale obviously has Minecraft roots, and there is an interesting story from their journey from Minecraft to being this independent game, which we won't touch on here. I think I was a few years too old and detached from that Minecraft wave, and because of this, all of this voxel and grid-based stuff just looks so goofy to me, and I can't get into it or excited about it, which is funny because I still think EverQuest graphics have a certain charm, right? I understand it's irrational, it's just what you grow up on. But it is crystal clear to me that this is a highly anticipated game, and with simpler assets comes the potential for faster released content and an appeal in spite of graphics, which gives the game great promise. That's really it though. Next year, there are some really interesting titles. Dual Universe specifically is one that's caught my eye, and I predict we'll see one of the handful of crowdfunded games come out, and there are a lot of interesting games and almost ideas out there that I can't wait to explore and share next year. But that's going to do it for me. If there is a game you're really looking forward to, let me know what it is and why you're excited for it. And until next time, this is Fever. Peace.